So what we've seen from Descartes is this view of the mind that it has three different properties. So first off, it's non-physical. Your body could disappear, you might not have a physical body, time and space might not exist, and yet Descartes notes, look, but even if I don't have a body, I still know that I'm a thinking thing. I'm still the one wondering whether or not my body exists. So since I could think without my body, it must be that the thing I'm doing this thinking with, my mind, exists outside of time and space. It is non-physical. So the first property of the mind is that it's non-physical. The second property is that uh, you always know what's going on in your mind. Even if Descartes doesn't know whether his hands exist or not, whether he has this physical body, he still knows for certain that he's thinking and what he's thinking at any given time. He just knows in virtue of thinking what it is that he's thinking about, what he is wondering or doubting or believing or desiring or wanting. So the mind is transparent in this way. We always know what we're thinking. So the mind is non-physical, it's transparent, and then in virtue of being transparent like this, it's also unified. Since you always know what's going on in your mind, there's always just this one thing, this one mind, that you're constantly aware of. It's a one single unified stream of thoughts. So Descartes' view of the mind is non-physical, transparent, and unified. And that view of the mind seems really intuitive to, to most of us, I think. I saw, see a lot of you writing in the comments saying, yeah, that sounds like what I am. That's my idea of what I am. I am this mind that could exist independently of, of my body, and I know what it is that I'm thinking at any given point. There's not, like, secret bits of myself that I'm not aware of. But what I've been trying to do the past couple of weeks is start to slowly break down this view of the mind that Descartes has and that a lot of you have. So we started off with Princess Elizabeth. Princess Elizabeth gives us some reasons to think that we should cast out this idea that the mind is non-physical. So as we've noted, Everyone agrees, Descartes agrees, Princess Elizabeth agrees, I think you and I could agree that our thoughts cause physical stuff to happen. It's because I want a piece of chocolate cake, that's a desire, something I'm thinking, and I believe that there's chocolate cake in the fridge, that's another thought that I'm having, is because of those mental thoughts that causes my body, my legs, to get up and walk over to the fridge and causes my very physical hand to reach in the fridge and grab the cake and shove it in my mouth. So there's an instance of uh, thought, the mind, causing physical stuff to happen. By the same token, physical stuff can cause mental things to happen. So it might be that when I see the piece of cake, that's what causes me to have the desire for a piece of cake. So it's the light waves bouncing off the cake, hitting the retinas of my eyes, that then causes me to desire cake. So there's a physical happening with light waves hitting my retinas that then causes me to have a mental thought, a desire for cake. Similarly, uh, uh, you could imagine uh, when I take something, take my hand and, ow, hit it with something, like this really creepy pig that's now decided to sing a creepy song. That, that's nice. When I hit my hand with that, it causes me to feel pain. So this mental sensation of pain is the causal result of me, ah, having this physical thing hitting my hand. Now, what Princess Elizabeth says is, okay, so mental stuff causes physical stuff, physical stuff causes mental stuff, but this mental stuff is supposed to somehow exist outside of space and time. It doesn't have length or width or height. Now, I get how one physical thing can cause another physical thing. If I've got this physical little pig right here, it's got 
height and width and length, etc. It exists in space, so does my hand. So I get how my hand can cause the pig to fall over. Well, my hand moves through space and enters the part of the space that the pig is in and so it goes. Uh, but how the heck is something that doesn't have length, doesn't have width, doesn't have height, isn't even in time, how is that supposed to interact causally with physical stuff? That's Princess Elizabeth's question. Descartes doesn't really seem to have a good answer, and in the four or five hundred years since, no one's really had a great answer. So that makes you start to think, ah, right, the hypothesis that the mind exists outside of space that is non-physical, that's not going to really hold up with what we know about the rest of the world. So, there's one aspect of mind off of our list. It seems like we've got good reason to think that the mind is actually physical somehow. What about the, the next thing on our list? This idea that the mind is unified, that uh, 